And we are back one more time with another episode of... The Horror Guys. I'm Kevin. I'm Brian. And we're going to talk about some horror movies. Four movies in a short, like always. We saw some interesting things this week. Yeah, oh, yeah we did. <laughs> yeah, we did. A <laughs> couple of new, bunch of new movies. Uh-huh. We, what are we starting with? Brooklyn 45. That's a comedy, means, right? Uh, no, no, it was not a comedy. <laughs> yeah. 1945, that is, it is what the title refers to. It's a World War II era ghost story, right after the war ends, is winding down. And then we'll go to prison in Nefarious, which is also new this year. And we watch a short film, Canary. That was a good one. And a pretty outrageous killer doll film called Baby Oopsie. And then we'll wrap it up with another new one, Black Demon from 2023. All right. The, and those are the ones, Black Demon. The Black, not yeah. the other Black Demon. Which is the a, Black Demon. Which is a bad shark, bad shark movie with a supernatural touch to it. He is the god of all sharks. Uh huh. Okay, and those are the ones we're going to talk about here today. If you are getting our newsletter over at HorrorBulletin.com, just go on over, sign up. It's free. It's one email a week, and it's got all our reviews in it. You'll also see Society from 1989, which is a very strange body horror movie with a little, um, I guess you could call it, Social commentary. Social commentary, definitely. And also from 2016, we watched the movie Morgan, which is about an insane killer robot. Or is it? Maybe it's not what it sounds like. Yeah. It's very science fiction-y, but it had some horror elements to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, heavily sci-fi, but I I liked that one a lot. Okay, so we mentioned earlier that we're going to talk about The Black Demon. It's a new giant shark movie. of The Black Demon. If you want a free copy... Email us, email at horrorguys.com. First five people will get a free copy that you redeem through Redbox. And that's very easy to do if you don't have a Redbox account. They're easy to sign up for on any device, pretty much. You don't have to put a credit card in or nothing. Yeah, just free, free, and you enter your code, and you can watch the digital copy of the movie. If you've ever gotten any of our giveaways, most of them are the Redboxes. And they're very, I mean, we have a Redbox account that we watch these on ourselves, and... We've never paid them a penny. Yeah, they don't charge you. You can subscribe. You can buy additional rentals, but that's completely optional. Yeah. Freebies are free. Yeah. And uh, some other things that are free are some of our books. Really? What a deal. HorrorGuysShop.com, and you can pick up issue 20 of the Horror Bulletin magazine. You can pick up Jess and the Werewolf, the first episode of our horror series. I've heard that's really good. But I'm biased. You kind of are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, what's the other one? Oh, the, the Horror Halloween. Guy's Guide to Halloween, Halloween Films. Yes, all three of those are free. And, of course, there's a whole bunch of books there that aren't free. And you can pick up some of those, too, if you're so inclined. That was at HorrorGuysShop.com. Mm-hmm. All right. Meanwhile, back in 1945... Something happened in Brooklyn. Brooklyn 45. New movie from 2023, written and directed by Todd Ted. Geoghan? Ted. Ted. Geo, Geo Hagen? How you know, would you say that? I, I, Joe, Joe Hagen. Ted Gorgon. <laughs> we apologize, Ted, if we're mispronouncing <laughs> that. We've never heard your name said out loud. <laughs> it stars Anne Ramsey, Ron Rains, Jeremy Holm, and it's got... um. Doesn't have Laura Dern in it. No, it's the other <laughs> the other Laura Dern. Yeah, she reminded me a whole lot of Laura Dern. She kept she kept reminding me. What do you think? What What are you talking about? Larry Fessenden. Oh yeah, uh-huh. yes, yeah. he's he's good in a lot of these horror movies. I don't know why he didn't make it to the credits here. Should have. Uh one dollar store Jack Nicholson. Uh yeah, and yeah, we got the dollar of. store yeah. Laura Dern here also. <laughs> the one guy was sort of a dollar store. Um, Timothy Dalton is who he kept reminding me of. Timothy Dalton, which one? The, one? the one guy. The gay character. Oh, okay. No, I was thinking he was more like Jaws. Okay. From the, from the James Bond <laughs> oh, movie. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I was thinking the dollar anyway, store Christopher Lloyd. Anyway, the, these There's pe- a lot of celebrity these people, lookalikes. In <laughs> these people in here will remind you of other people. But they do a fine job themselves. Yes, it's all yeah. very it's very good. We both recommend yeah, it. They're, they're all Spoiler very good together. free, what happens? Well, this was interesting as it plays out in real time. And it's mostly just people in one room. They they gather together outside and they come in and it just runs, you know, straight through. 
The acting is excellent. Script was interesting, and there are some horror elements for sure. Um, but the ending it left us kind of unsatisfied. So uh, you know, we we both kind of felt there should have been more there. It was good up to the last two minutes. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a letdown there, but worth it. Okay, know. yeah. And even with our spoileries, if you want to read the full spoilery synopsis, go to horrorguys.com and read the read the the web review. We won't, I'm not gonna, we won't super spoil it here. I'm going to read some of it here, but I'll stop before it gets too giveaway-ish. Uh-huh. Well, it's Christmas in New Year's noon at 1945, and the war is finally over. Bob and Marla Sheridan arrive and meet Major Stanton, whom Bob calls a war criminal. Yeah, I think it's December 27th. It's between Christmas and New Year's. All right. Yeah. Well, she doesn't believe that he's a war criminal. Well, they go all go into Lieutenant Colonel Clive Hock, Hockstadter's place, and the Major welcomes them all. Major Paul DeFranco is already there, and he's been drinking all day. Never a good way to start a party. No. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, Marla works at the Pentagon now, and Clive mentions how Marla used to inter- interrogate prisoners for information. She's America's finest interrogator, he says. Well, they're all there because Clive's wife, Susan, has died, and he's all alone for the holidays. They've come to cheer him up. Mm -hmm. Boy, that doesn't work out so well. Not so well. It's not a fun party. (laughs) Archie complains that the press is calling him a war criminal, but the others all say it'll blow over. Bob, Marla's husband, is the only real outsider, and he's obviously uncomfortable with all these military types. Yeah, he doesn't have a military connection. Well, they all drink a toast to dead Susie. Clive says he's been doing a lot of reading in the past six weeks since she committed suicide, and he's been reading up on the supernatural, ghosts and so forth, he says. He's not saying he believes any of it, but he does want them to humor him by having a seance. Paul thinks it's silly, and Bob doesn't think it's a good idea either. Well, Clive gives a long speech about death and what happens afterwards, and eventually everyone agrees to go ahead with the seance. He has Susan's bloody handkerchief, and that creates some alarm in his guests. Why do you have that? Yeah, you. Well, they all hold hands, and Clive calls for the spirits. There's a beating at the closet door, and Clive warns that they can't break the circle before they end the seance. Well, Paul thinks this is all just a silly trick and says that out loud. Susan's locket comes to life and points at each of them. Clive tells the spirits, Force your way into our world with all your might. And then he pukes up a big white glob that turns into a visible ghost. Ghost, and they hear Susan's voice. Ectoplasm. Then things get weird, and Clive and Paul break the link. Yeah, he himself... You know, he's saying, don't break the circle, don't break yeah, the circle. Yeah, he does well, it. The, the ectoplasm hand is kind of reaching out, and he reaches over to try to take her hand, and yeah, that breaks the circle. Well, Oops. they didn't finish the seance, so the door to the afterlife is still open, so they can try again. It's real! They all believe it now. And weird things happen. Yeah, and then some weird stuff happens. <laughs> yeah, some, some surprises and other things, yeah. All right, well, this all mostly takes place in one room in real time, There's some supernatural stuff early on, but the bulk of the drama comes with a handful of people just not getting along. They're just in a room hanging out. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, the acting was excellent, and the character drama was really good. The special effects were a lot less than you might think, but they were perfectly adequate. It's all very good, but the ending was very weak, which we're not going to spoil. No. I was expecting some kind of twist or some fallout, but nope, that doesn't happen. Nope, nope, nope. And Kevin pointed out, we didn't really know what went on there two, uh, six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. There, there's some debate about the suicide. And we really, we're, we're told well, one thing, we well, see another thing, like, and we're not quite sure. It's something I've thought before. You know, it is, this is kind of a trope where the ghost appears and says, oh, so-and-so killed me. And then the you know everybody takes action based on that. But like, in this you know, case, you go back to like uh, Hamlet by Shakespeare. Uh, Hamlet's ghost, uh, the ghost of his father, appears and says he was murdered. And you know, um, <clears throat> everybody assumes the ghost is telling the truth. Yeah, a ghost can yeah. lie. Ghost can lie. Ghost can. If the person was crazy in life, isn't the ghost still going to be crazy and a liar and a, you know a manipulator and. You know, these things would carry over, wouldn't they, if, if it's really that person? 
you know, I, I thought that was into question here. Yeah, we, you know. we can get into the too much without spoilers, but r- read the review and see what you think. Let yeah. us know. Let us know your opinion. Yeah, yeah. And a one that has very opinionated is Nefarious from 2023, written and directed by Chuck Kunzelman and Gary Kerry Solomon, stars Sean Patrick Flannery, Jordan Belfi, and Tom Omer. Hour and thirty seven minutes. Trailer in the show notes. And I was seeing hate on this movie on Facebook long before I even saw the trailer. Yeah, I was too. So people people like it, people hate it. Most of the the bad reviews I said saw called it kept calling it Christian propaganda. It is, but the, aren't all exorcist movies sort of like that? I think this was more so. But yeah, yeah. There's a scene kind of tacked on at the end that I I think really turned people off. Mm-hmm. But the majority yeah. of the 90% of the movie was, you know, it was pretty much standard, you know, I, demon I, stuff. I didn't think most of it was any worse than well, I think you mentioned the exorcist in your in your yeah. in your, you know, any any movies along those lines that are, you know, heavily demon possession religion and yeah. Yeah. They do throw in a, You can't have more... demons without, you know, some god stuff in there too. Yeah. Yeah, and the demon is, you know, spouting off on what demon demon talk and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, that last scene you know was was religiously, you know, beating us over the head somewhat, but Yeah. But overall, yeah. It was all right. It was all right. Well, spoiler free, this was very hit and miss. The performance from Sean Patrick Flannery was amazing. He's very good in this. And Jordan Belfi was kept up with him, I guess. He didn't impress me that much. But Oh, I thought I thought he did fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he did fine. Yeah. The basics of the script is interesting, and there are some chilling moments, but it's mostly just two guys sitting, sitting in a room talking. This is like our two guys in a room talking episode. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are several plot points that really don't work like they do in the movie, and there's a wrap-up scene that neither of us enjoyed. Yeah, this movie and the previous one, Brooklyn 45, almost could have been stage plays. You know, uh-huh. They had that feel to it because it's just one set, mostly. Uh, the Brooklyn 45 even more so than this one. They they do go to other parts of the prison, but the bulk of it happens just in this one room. Yeah. yeah. Well, without going too far, what happens? Dr. Fisher writes something in a book, straightens his MD certificate on the wall, and then leaves. And did you notice it was still crooked when he yes. left? Yeah. yeah. And then we see him jump off the roof of his office tower. As the credits roll. Oh, I wonder what's up with that. Yeah. Well, it's the day of Edward Wayne Brady's scheduled execution, and there are many protesters outside the prison. Dr. James Martin arrives to evaluate Brady before the execution. The warden offers to let him just sign off and go home, but Martin wants to do it right. We all know this guy's guilty. Just sign the papers and get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Shame about Dr. Fisher's death, but they aren't going to delay the execution again. So, pre, so he was the, the suicide guy, was this guy's previous doctor. Well, the warden warns him that Brady is a master manipulator and a genius, and he's sure to try to convince Martin that he's insane so that he can't be executed. All the guards leave the cell, leaving Brady and Martin alone in the room together. Well, Brady already knows a lot about Martin's background. Brady says he made Fisher commit suicide, and he wants Martin to write his story. He says he's a demon and cannot really die. He says his name is Nefariamos, or Nefarious for short. And he's pretty twitchy and fast-talking and crazy-looking. He really sells it. Brady says that before Martin leaves today, he will have committed three murders. Which Martin just says, nah, I ain't gonna do that. Well, he describes the stages of his possession of Brady. And his work with Brady is done. And he wants to be executed. He won't die, but Brady will. So Martin, with all this demon talk, calls in a chaplain for some insight, since he's an atheist. And Brady gives a whole diatribe against atheists like Martin. He gives a lot of diatribes about uh, abortion and you know various religious issues. Well, a light bulb explodes overhead. Probably just a coincidence, Nefarious says. <laughs> <laughs> Father Lewis comes in, and Brady isn't happy to see him. Lewis doesn't believe in demons either, but he also doesn't stay long. Well, Martin wants proof that Brady's a demon. Nefarious wants Martin to invite him in. Martin, still an atheist, tells him, go right ahead and possess him. And nothing really happened there. 
It didn't, you know, didn't not seem to. Not yet. Not yet, yeah. Well, Nefarious lets the real Brady talk, and he says he didn't want to kill anyone. The demon forced him to. So Martin is thinking at this point, you know, it's multiple Split personality, pers- multiple personality disorder, dissociative disorder, you know. <clears throat> and Brady goes back to being nefarious, says that Martin killed his own mother. It was medically assisted suicide, supposedly, 10 years ago. That was Martin's first murder. Two to go. Martin still thinks that Brady has, you know, split personalities, and they talk about theology for a long while. Should we not stop there more? Yeah, well, it just goes on and back and forth for, you know, another couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it did seem a little bit too long. The kind of, they're, they're, they're yakky yak. Okay, well, this isn't how an execution works. They wouldn't do a mental evaluation just hours before the execution. That would have been done long before. Yeah, that that is how that is done in the real world. Yeah. And then they're if at this deemed, point they put a lot of time, effort, and money into this execution, and they wouldn't do that if instead of yeah. execution they go to an institution. Yeah. Also, they don't execute people at a secret time of day. It's always heavily publicized. Yeah, the warden was. I like think they were telling people it was midnight, it but it was really at eleven p.m. or something like that. Yeah, which was kind of a weird way to. Especially do it. since they had an audience and everything there. Somebody and the press was there. They they would have known. Yeah. Yeah. Also, in the execution room, there's a detective who brings his gun in. And I don't know. I don't think. They, I don't think so. I don't think you bring guns into a prison. The prison period. guards would have the guns. Well, They're I don't not going to let even a cop carry one in. Yeah, I don't know if the, even the prison guards on the floor have them. The the ones up on the walls and the towers have yeah, them. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I don't. I don't think they. Yeah. So I've there, never been in a death chamber. Never been know. there, but you know, <laughs> but there were some things that made you say, "Hey, that's not how that really works." Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, there were some chains that were holding Brady's hands to the table, which we both noticed right away were way too long, and of course that became a plot point later. Yeah, he had way too much freedom there. And Kevin came up all these details before the five minute point. <laughs> yeah. He just much. really picked it apart right away. <laughs> well, I saw these things right away. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of factual problems with this one. Would they have allowed that detective to carry a gun into the execution? I don't think so. I, I don't think so, yeah. Well, we've heard this film called Religious Propaganda, and it certainly makes a number of anti-abortion arguments among the less obvious things. But if you ignore the epilogue, it wasn't really much more religious than, like, The Exorcist. You know, if you're trying to drive out a demon, you call on God and, you know... Mm-hmm. The power of Christ compels you. Yeah. Yeah. Just like in The Exorcist, another yeah. exorcism and Every exorcism movies. movie ever. Yeah, the devil and Father Amareth. And, yeah, the Pope's um, exorcist. The Pope's exorcist, yeah, yeah. the real one. Uh, yeah. Um, I think maybe, I don't know. I, there was a lot of speech of in there about, uh, I suppose if you're very, very anti-abortion, or, or pro-abortion, pro-abortion, I mean. Yeah, this movie was very anti-abortion. Yeah. But um, I think that part of the problem, reading people's reviews of it and discussion of it and stuff, they took it so seriously. Like, it was... And I wanted to remind some people, like, this is a work of fiction. This isn't a real demon talking here. You know, you do realize this is just a movie. <laughs> you know, this, is, this isn't the words of God or anything. Well, this is just all, some person all we know really is what people have been posted on you know, Facebook and the horror movie groups on this one. Well, it's and, entirely and possible that too. churches were promoting it. Oh, I mean, they do that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it was heavily, you know, it's, it's known, the, the folks involved. Um, but, you know, the, the, the way some people were taken up so seriously, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, it's just a movie, folks. <laughs> Sean Patrick Flannery acts his heart out between his two personalities, and it's 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 actually quite good in the beginning, but it kind of gets old very fast. It's way too much talking. By the 25-minute point, I was looking at my watch. It's kind of like a play set in a single room with two guys making speeches at each other, and this section at the end, there is an execution scene, and it's pretty brutal and very realistic. Yeah, it was. Maybe anti-death penalty there. Mm-hmm. And who actually decided that Glenn Beck, of all people, <laughs> would play the voice of reason at the end? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. That, that, yeah. I had heard that he made an appearance in it. Wow. Yeah. The whole final segment with the interview was unnecessary and boring, and that politicized it far more than anything that the speeches were going on about. 
Overall, we we kind of been sticking up for it, saying it's not so much Christian propaganda, but it's not good either. I did not like it. If, if, the best thing about it was his the first fifteen was minutes his were good, and it was all crap after that. The best thing about it was Sean Patrick Flannery. He was very good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a fan of him and his work. I, this was really top notch. I'm not a fan of him. Okay, he's been on a lot of crap, uh, yeah. but he was very good That's, here. Yeah, uh-huh. I guess he's he still been on a lot of crap. <laughs> <laughs> he's hit and miss too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then we watched a short film called Canary from 2023, writ, uh, directed by Taka Subota, written by Jasper Chen, stars Baron Lung, Andrew Hayden Kang, Matthew Mitchell Espinoza. It's about 17. 17- 58, almost 18 minutes long. And there's a trailer you can watch. There's a link to the website. This is still going around the, the festival circuit, so there's not a YouTube link this time. But it's something to watch for. It'll be out eventually, I'm sure. And it's worth seeing if you can if you can catch it. Yeah. What's 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 it about? Well, a couple of guys talk about starving and lack of food. There's another man writing in his diary. And something we don't see happens outside, which upsets him and all the others. And the others tell him to come in and shut the doors so the spiders don't see him. Will help ever come? At least the rain will drive them off for a while, right? And we get a flashback to the group driving into the forest one night during break. So we get some background about how they got there and who they are. And, um, yeah, it's in English. It doesn't appear to be in an English-speaking part of the world though no uh everybody involved was the, in the, some way asian the cast are um, asian yes and, yeah but uh yeah it's in it's in, not subtitled yeah the the email i got that told me about it specifically pointed out that it was an, an entirely asian film mm-hmm. um so yeah as we flip back and forth between the good times in the car and the nastiest of the present lord of the flies kind of situation we eventually start to figure out what's going on and which is worse the monster outside or the monster inside? Mm, good question. It looks good and the acting is fine. Uh, my one complaint would be it ends kind of abruptly without any resolution to either the monster plot or the social plot. It left me wanting more. This could have been a full length. Well, it still could, I suppose, be a full length movie. Uh huh. It feels like, you know, like it, a, it wanted more. Yeah, I wanted yeah, more. It did. We all wanted more. But yeah, really, really nicely done. All right. And next up. Did you make a mistake today? Baby oopsie. Oopsie. <laughs> Baby oopsie from 2021. And last week we did <clears throat> Oops, I'm a Vampire. Mm-hmm. And we were in 2B typing in O-O-P-S to bring up Oops, Oops I'm a Vampire. And, then and this popped up next us. to it and we watched the trailer. And we are like, we got to yeah, see, see that. <laughs> 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 Baby oopsie from 2021, written and directed by William Butler, stars Libby Higgins, Joseph Hubner, Justin Armistead, hour and ten minutes. Surprisingly short. And there is a trailer on YouTube. Uh, Spoiler free, what happens? This was quite a strange trip of strange people and a very strange doll. And there is loads of dark humor and generous amounts of gore. And a good soundtrack, too. We call it a win overall. If you've ever seen a killer doll movie, this is a killer doll movie. Uh Uh-huh. And it it ties in with the... um, Demonic, Demonic Toys, Toys series. Yes. It's the same guy. We have not and, officially uh, watched any of those. But, uh, yeah, there's reference to that, and it, it ties in with those. Yeah. the puppet, fan of that. The Puppet Master movies, we've done a few reviews of those in the past. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Demonic Toys movies are made by the same people, but we haven't done one of those yet. We've got to do that one of these days. Yeah, we do. And now this is sort of a third series all by the Full Moon Productions and, uh, and there's some Charles others. Band. There's some sequels, too, I understand. Yeah, yeah, this came out in 2021, and there's already at least two sequels. <laughs> <laughs> it don't take long. Yeah. Well, not to spoil it too much, because it is fairly recent, but we open with Sybil Pittman working on her sewing machine. We see lots and lots of dolls all over her house, and she turns on the camera and starts recording. She has a show, didn't say YouTube or Twitch or whatever, but it's a streaming show about reclaiming and restoring dolls. She's the doll whisperer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The doorbell rings, and Mitzi yells for her to get the door, and credits roll. And right away we see that Mitzi is kind of a terrible person. Yeah, yeah, that's her stepmom. The postman is is in love with Libby. The unicorn scout girl selling cookies is not a fan of her. Sybil's stepmother Mitzi is just a horrible person. 
Sybil opens her package, and it's a really scary-looking old doll head with baby oopsie printed on the back. And it's, like, burnt and cut and stapled shut, and it's a mess. Yeah, it's nasty. Well, they rent out a room to Christy, but Mitzi doesn't like her either. Mitzi wonders if Sybil is still crazy. Well, Sybil gets to work restoring the ugly head. She improves it quite a bit, but it's still hideous. She explains her love for dolls to Christy, who is really very nice to her, telling her to stand up for herself. Well, the neighbor Ray Ray comes over and gives Sybil a package left on his doorstep by mistake. She gets robbed by some kids shortly thereafter, but Oopsie is in her handbag and hears everything. At work, Sybil receives a strange pentagram gear in the mail. Her boss is condescending and mean, and she gets a final warning about being late. Well, she comes home that night and continues working on Oopsie. Ray Ray comes over and gives her a pep talk, but she doesn't really appreciate his attention. Later, Mitzi starts yelling about nonsense, and baby Oopsie's gl eyes glow bright green. Well, Oopsie is supposed to be the highlight of her next show, but his voice still doesn't quite work yet. And that doll is something. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Sybil puts the funky pentagram gear inside the doll to fix it. Oh, and he works perfectly now. Oh, yeah. It laughs maniacally. We see it looking around as its eyes move. Sybil then goes to sleep. Baby Oopsie starts running around for, looking for a knife. The bitch is back, it says. <laughs> assaulting the other dolls. Oopsie then strangles Gator, one of the robbers from earlier, trash-talking him the whole time. And it goes on from there. Yeah, it does. Revenge, it baby Oopsie. Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin says it's like Gollum meets Chucky. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah. But it's a hundred times better than it sounds. It was awesome. This is produced by Charles Band, the man behind Puppet Master and Demonic Toys series. And the music and audio are excellent, which is one of the things that made those other series stand out. Kevin wasn't reading the credits. And as the opening credits roll, he says, the music. Hey, this is a lot like Puppet, Puppet Master. Master. It's reminding me of that. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same, but it's very connected in his head. Uh-huh. Well, I like how Sybil imagines killing her tormentors. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things the boss is yelling, and she like pulls out an axe and kills them, and like, no, not really. <laughs> she wouldn't do it herself, so Oopsie is a dream come true, even if it's a dream covered in blood. The doll here is a great-looking prop, and is horrendously ugly and surprisingly expressive. I don't know how they did that. Because... Combination of puppetry, and I think that it almost looked like claymation type effects sometime on the facial movements well but they've got like the, 20 of these a, killer doll movies out now they, they know, know what, what they're, they're doing, doing. Yeah. yeah but I, I think it might have been a combination of different effects puppetry and stop stop motion and yeah but it, it, yeah it, it's well done <laughs> it is cheap it is low budget and the acting isn't great but i think we both loved it yeah yeah we did <laughs> we're gonna have to watch the sequels <laughs> yes <laughs> All right, it takes us to the big movie this week, The Black Demon 2023, directed by Alan Grunberg, written by Carlos Sisco and Boise Esquera. Stars Josh Lucas, Fernanda Urahola, and Venus Ariel. Hour and 40 minutes. Trailer in the show notes. If you want a free copy, email us. Email at horrorguys.com. First five people get one. Mm -hmm. All right, um, spoiler free. Statement from the publisher says... Who, who read the previous one, me or you? Oh, I'll read this one. Go okay. No. Well, uh, spoiler free. From the publisher, they say, now streaming on Redbox On Demand, Josh Lucas stars in the heart-pounding action thriller The Black Demon. An idyllic family vacation turns into a fight for survival when they encounter a ferocious megalodon shark that will stop at nothing to protect its territory. Stream the Black Demon instantly on Redbox today for the ultimate battle between humans and nature. Rated R from Paramount Pictures. And I already take offense to this statement. It was never an idyllic vacation. <laughs> they had a horrible time in town. Yeah, right from, well, you know, the drive there was kind of nice. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But once they once they get there, the, the town, it's been a long time since he's been there, and it's all dusty and boarded up and... 
dying town. It's a cursed and, town. Yeah, so right away it's a downer for them. Yeah. Know, so, but the drive there was nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so continuing on with the Horror Guys version of the spoiler-free Judgment Zone, there are some thrills and chills and decent action scenes. So there's a lot to like here. I mean, it's not an amazing film. It's a little predictable, but it's entertaining overall. If you're a fan of Sharks Gone Bad movies, this is one worth checking out. Yep, it is. Yep, it's a killer shark movie. Yeah. Just like the preview was a killer doll, this is a killer shark. <laughs> killer shark. If you like them, you like them. Uh-huh. All right, well, at least somewhat spoiler-free, what happens? We are told of a legendary godlike shark that only comes when summoned. And we open on two men, one a diver, out late at night, checking on the base of an oil rig. And it's unclear why they're doing it at night, but we see the diver... We find out later. Yeah, yeah. We see the diver looking at a clock, and it's a light-up clock that looks an awful lot like a countdown timer on a bomb that is attached to one of the legs of the rig. Well, the diver is eaten, as is his tender on the boat that he's uh, in the whole boat i mean the, the both guys are just gone everything is gone yeah and then credits roll well tommy paul eins and is it it is in is in is it's in is yes uh and audrey uh drive the car on vacation somewhere in mexico paul is there to inspect and possibly decommission the huge oil rig out on the horizon he knows the area but it's been a while and they get there the whole town has gone downhill and the hotel they were planning at staying on is pretty much shut down. Well, they soon run into El Ray, who's a tough guy and not into gringos at all. There's a bit of a con uh, confrontation, but uh, wife Inez, she's fluent, fortunately, and she steps in, rescues Paul from an assault, calms things down. Tommy, Tommy steals something from a local shop, and it's, it's like an alder, and he takes a little figurine from the, from the alder. El Rey takes them to a place to stay and mentions protection from a demon, but Paul doesn't believe any of it, soon leaves on a boat to the oil rig. The boatman, boatman says that the oil rig woke up a demon from the deep, and that's why everything is so bad in town. And Paul just smiles at the ignorant man. And the boatman gets off and sends Paul the rest of the way on his own. He won't go near that place. Well, back on the beach, little Tommy points out to Audrey and Inez that there are no birds there, which is weird. Local toughs notice the trio, and soon uh, things escalate into Inez breaking a bottle over some guy's head and running back to their car, which has four flat tires. So she offers a different boatman a handful of cash. Quick, quick, take us out to the oil rig. And of course, this is a workplace. He didn't want the family out there on the oil rig, uh -huh. but she doesn't know where else to go, and you know that's an option. Yeah, there's very few people in town, and uh, yeah, this is you know their panic solution. Well, Paul arrives at the oil rig first, and it appears to be deserted, but he does finally find two men and a little dog. They see in as his boat approaching, start making a bunch of noise, and we see a huge shark destroy Paul's boat. Audrey falls into the water, and we see lots and lots of body parts floating down there. They watch as the second boat is swallowed whole by the most outrageously huge shark that ever was. Probably time to stop. Yeah. Yes. There's so a giant boat-eating shark out there. boats have been destroyed, and they're stuck on this deserted oil rig. What are they going to do? Well, some people say it's a megalodon. Some say it's a reincarnation of a shark god, or maybe it's just a really big, big shark. We don't know. Oh, well. It's bad. It's bad, Which, yes. Whichever it really is, it's bad. <laughs> but yeah. the real villain here is the evil corporations. What you gonna do? Yeah, there's always an evil corporation. And this one is especially evil. Well, as soon as, as, soon as we saw the bomb, we knew exactly how this was gonna end. <laughs> and we were right. We guessed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were able to see the oil rig. Oddly enough, they're standing on the beach, and the little boy looks through his binoculars, and he can see the oil rig out there. Is yeah, that it, the, Daddy? It's clear on the horizon. Yeah, that's it's it. It's visible. Yeah. But... When you get out to the oil rig, there's no land anywhere in sight. It's like miles and miles and miles out there. I'm pretty sure, though, vision works in two directions. I think it Especially does. when you're looking at something as big as a continent. I think so, yeah. 
<laughs> well, the sets are cool. The situation is interesting and unique. The acting, direction, and special effects are middle of the road. I've certainly seen better sharks. But it was okay. The plot is predictable and overly melodramatic, but well executed for what it is. It ain't Jaws, or even The Meg. And well, it, it is a Meg, though. Well, <laughs> the, the Meg movie. <laughs> yeah. This is much more of an isolation with a time limit thriller. You know, there uh, Meg Two is coming out real soon now. Oh, it is. Uh huh. Oh, I didn't know that. Jason Statham and he's back. Yeah, he's back. Yeah. All right. Anyway, the... we liked the first one, didn't we? I don't know. Having yeah. a time, hard yeah. time remembering that one. Yeah, it was decent. Yeah. Action movie. Uh huh. Yeah. So this this was all right. Yeah, it's all right. I didn't regret watching it. Yeah. All right. Then over on the newsletter side, we watched Society from 1989. And if you watch that, be warned that it starts out. Kind of a bland, slow-moving, 80s, low-key horror movie. Uh, and and then it gets really, really good at the end. There's there's a scene at the end <laughs> worth waiting for. <laughs> My advice, <laughs> skip to about the 30-minute to the end point. Okay. It's got a lot of blah, blah, blah. Okay. A lot of 80s <laughs> drama. And 2016 Morgan, which was a heavy science fiction action thriller... But it has horror horror elements of the creation of life forms and the problems that can arise from that. And it was pretty cool. A powerhouse cast. Oh, yeah. The top cast notch, here is really top notch special something. special effects. Yeah. And, yeah, all around very good. It was a very, it, major flop at the box office, and I, I don't, don't remember why. why. I don't yeah. know why. It didn't, des- it didn't deserve to flop. Well, I don't think either of us had heard about it until a month or so ago. Something went wrong in their publicity machine, I guess. Yeah, it yeah just, I don't know. It should have been bigger than it was. Yeah. All right, so this week we looked at we looked at Brooklyn 45, Nefarious, Baby Oopsie, and The Black Demon. Which was your favorite? I'd have to go with Baby Oopsie. So would I. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the cheapest, most <laughs> low-budget movie of the bunch. Yeah. Followed by Brooklyn 45. Maybe yeah. My second favorite. Yeah. 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 Uh, I definitely am going to thumbs down on Nefarious. Uh-huh. Not for the typical reason. But uh, Black Demon is, yeah, it's all right if you're into those. Yeah, I, I give Black Demon a solid seven and Nefarious a solid uh, six, seven. Well, there's, yeah. More, see, more anything above Sam, five, I would want to see again. I'm more thumbs up than. You want to see Nefarious downy. again? Um, probably not. That's, but, then it's but, a five or lower. <laughs> no, that's not how I rate them. <laughs> see, my eights or higher are the ones that I'd like to see again. We need like a four or five star system. <laughs> yeah, I guess. All right, Brooklyn 45 is a four-star out of five. Nefarious is a two-star out of five. Uh, Baby Oopsie is a, oh my God, it's five of five. Yeah. And the Black Demon is a three of five, from my opinion. Okay. What do you think? Uh, a three-star on Nefarious and the Black Demon, four-star on Brooklyn, and five-star on Oopsie. Yeah. <laughs> we may be the only people who like <laughs> Baby Oopsie. It's straight to Tubi, I think. <laughs> All right, well, next week we're going to watch a whole bunch of more 2023 films, a bunch of new stuff. Yes, we will. I think we've watched more new horror films this year than in any of the years previous. It's been a good year for horror. A lot of them, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we'll see you next week. I'm Brian. And I'm Kevin. And we'll see you.